Hey everyone, I'm Chris from Champion Helmets and this is our modular helmet buying guide where I'm going to show you all the things that you need to be looking for when you go to buy a modular helmet. So modular helmets or flip up helmets as they're also called are going to be your standard kind of best of both world helmet type. They want to combine the advantages of an open face helmet and a full face helmet but sometimes it can really feel like they've only managed to capture the uh, disadvantages and the negatives of those helmet types. So today, that's what we're gonna try and help you guys avoid. We're gonna go through and talk about all the stuff that you should be looking for in a helmet and exactly what makes a good modular helmet. So we've put out a bunch of guides recently and we're continuing to do so on the different types of helmet, uh, what you should be looking for generally and stuff like that. Today, we're gonna zoom in just on modular helmets, but make sure you check them out on our YouTube channel if you wanna learn more and make sure you subscribe so you can stay up to date with everything that we're doing. So the shell of a modular helmet is going to be pretty much the same as with every other helmet out there, and that's because there are just three main types of shell material. And in order of increasing premiumness, that is polycarbonate, fiberglass, and carbon fiber. Now it's very easy to explain because as each level of premium goes up, uh, you get less weight, but also a stronger shell, and they kind of like, they intertwine there where uh, a stronger shell requires less material overall, which reduces weight, it works like that. Now, you need to really take care of weight with a modular helmet, and that's because these are typically heavy helmets. Taking uh, a helmet, cutting a section off of it, and then making it uh, rotate up and lock in position and still be safe, is going to require extra materials, extra mechanisms, and extra weight. So that's why these helmets uh, typically weigh more and why you need to really look out for this. Adding in the chin bar creates a natural weak point in the shell. And you know, you just need to be able to open the chin bar to be a modular helmet. So you then need to have gaps like this. And even when you close up your helmet, those gaps are still gonna remain to an extent. And these needs extra reinforcement because there's no EPS where this gap is. That means you're not gonna be able to absorb shocks very well from this area. That means that your helmet is gonna be less safe. So they really need to beef that area up in order to make it uh, safe and make it meet standards. Keep in mind as well, if you take a modular helmet, you're probably going to be a touring rider or commuter or something like that. So that means that you're gonna really want a lot of comfort from your helmet uh, so that it doesn't literally drag you down after a long ride. So you want a drop down sun visor, maybe you want extra noise isolation, a thicker liner, stuff like that. It all adds weight. So with a modular helmet especially, you need to really look at what the weight of the helmet is. When it comes to the relative weight of modular helmets, the AGV Sport module is the king. It's going to come in at 1300 grams, which is very light. It's made out of carbon fiber. It's been super efficiently designed to be very light, stuff like that. Then we have the Roof Desmo here, which is somewhat more towards the higher end of that spectrum. It's going to be 1700, 1750 grams, which sounds like a lot. It's a big difference between these two helmets, but this isn't bad. This is going to be, it's a little bit heavier than like your, high, your premium level average, but still, 1,700 grams on a, uh, on a modular helmet, it's not that bad. Anything under two kilos is workable. If you go over that two kilo mark, I'll definitely go and consider another modular helmet just because there's gonna be uh, probably better helmets out there for a similar price under that two kilo mark. But just remember, if you're touring, riding a lot, long periods of time, it's gonna put a lot of weight onto your neck and it's gonna cause you discomfort and potentially pain. So always, lightest is best. Now, because we add on all of this extra material to the shell to make it stronger, we have the mechanisms for the uh, chin bars, we add bulk onto the helmet. And bulk is not good. It's going to make your helmet look bigger, which is going to catch uh, more wind, it's going to have a higher wind resistance, and it's going to be less aerodynamic, which adds essentially weight onto your head. You can see here in this Desmo, it's got a very, very big section for the chin bar mechanism. Whereas compared to the Sport Modular here, which has very, very little at all. You want something more like this than like this. Wind tunnel testing is the best method uh, for creating an aerodynamic helmet. This is something done in the design and the manufacturing stage, uh, I guess the testing uh, stage. But like this sport modular, it looks clean. This Desmo does not. And that is going to be a big giveaway that you and I can kind of just pick out and see. Compu uh, computational methods are also pretty good uh, at designing helmets when it comes to wind resistance but obviously wind tunnel testing, the real deal is the best way to go. Keep that in mind, look for what your uh, helmet is, look for how it's been tested, 
and it should help you to come up with a more aerodynamic helmet. So obviously, what defines a module helmet is its chin bar and how it flips up. So if you let me do that here on this roof box of carbon, I'll show you the two main types of module helmets. You have this one here. This one goes all the way to the back of your head, whereas this one sits up on your brow. And this is going to be the more common style. This is less common. You do have other options like the Shark Evo 1 2. Uh, but yeah, most of them, Swat Modular, uh, C4 Pro, obviously, Near Tech 2, all those ones are going to be like this. And this is a bit stylistic, but it also comes with some advantages and disadvantages. The uh, roof box of carbon, in this case, it can be worn in this position as a jet helmet. It's legally covered. But a lot of helmets are not covered in this position. It doesn't count as a jet helmet. This is also going to be much, much worse for your aerodynamics. Obviously, this is going to improve that somewhat. And there's a few other benefits like that. Essentially, look at how you ride. Look at how you want to ride. And if you're going to be going for, I guess, tours, you're going to uh, stop, have a coffee, talk to your mates, anything like that, this will be fine for you, but if you want to actually have the jet helmet experience, you're going to need something like this roof box of carbon uh, where you can actually wear it in the uh, jet position. So check your legality of your modular helmet and make sure that it fits your purpose. So specifically with a modular helmet, you're going to want to see how the chin bar seals. And you can see this Neotech 2. It looks neat and tidy. Does it seal well? I can't tell by just looking at it. I can take this roof Desmo here, and I can look at it, and I can see, wow, it's got some very big gaps. Uh, sure, I think it's not going to seal that great. But it's also not going to be a clear kind of story. It can seal great, it can seal terribly. You need to do your research, because it's very difficult to actually look at a helmet, feel a helmet, uh, and judge how that shin bar is going to seal for you. So you can check out our reviews of these helmets, and we'll tell you all about exactly how the shin bar seals into the helmet. Just make sure you do your research. Now something that really separates the higher quality from the lower quality modular helmets is noise isolation. Noise isolation is going to be one of those things as well that you can't just see by holding a helmet or looking at a helmet, anything like that. Instead, you need to uh, do your research, check everything out. You do have helmets like the HV uh, Sport Modular, the Shoei Tech 2 here, uh, the Shuba C4 Pro. These helmets really strive to be super quiet and they are the best in their categories. If you go down in terms of price, you obviously get uh, lower quality and lesser noise isolation. As a tourer, it's going to be uncomfortable. It can literally save you a headache to have better noise isolation. So check that out and uh, make sure that you always do your research. So there are a few common things among all types of helmets out there. Stuff like the line, the visor mechanism, the visor, the visor seal, uh, ventilation that kind of thing. We're not going to really touch on that because we've already made a video on it. Which it's uh, quite general and we speak about all those features and what you should be looking for. Basically though, if you're getting a modular helmet, you're probably a tourer. So you then want touring specific helmets. And most modular helmets will cater to that, but you want to make sure. You want to make sure you get the ventilation that's going to be in a good position for when you're uh, in a touring position. You don't want to be in a massive tuck as a tourer and stuff like that. Then you want to have like a pinlock lens. They're great. Make sure you can get one. Uh, if you can, and also drop down sun visor is also going to be really handy for a tourer. So look for things that are specific to your needs. And yeah, even if you're not going on long rides at the moment, you're not planning on going on long rides, you might in the future. So it's always great to have a few of those extra comfortable features like the sun visor especially. So I cannot stress enough that if you want more information about what to look for in a helmet or the different types of helmets, uh, specifics about a specific helmet or anything like that, check out our YouTube channel. We have more guides and reviews uh, about everything you need to know and there's always more coming. So this has been our modular helmets buying guide. I hope that you guys found it useful or at the very least uh, enjoyable. So if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, leave them down below in the comment section and we'll talk about it. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris from Champion Helmets and I'll see you guys all next time.